right, nine one. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Nine. We're doing three sections in nine of the four, and then we're doing a couple in ten, and then we're done. So. Okay, we're going to be looking at correlation between two variables, seeing if a correlation even exists, what kind of correlation it is, and how strong is that correlation. So we're just going to look at some common sense right now. What kind of correlation do you think exists between height and IQ score? Zero. Nothing. Probably no correlation. Are yeah, taller people smarter than shorter people? No, shorter like than shorter people? Probably we're Everybody probably guessing. The average height depends so on we are that. probably guessing no correlation here. Well, if we correlate between the taller you are, the less blood goes to your brain. That's what I just said, Lucas. Oh, you said taller people are smarter. Maybe you should. Yeah. Well, maybe average height is the dumbest. Okay, how about hours of sleep? And I've got a oh, reaction time. What do you think? Do you think there's a correlation here? More sleep, faster reaction time. We think that a relationship exists. How strong is it? I don't know until we do a, a study. So we do think there is a... How would you call that correlate? What would you call it? Remember back from algebra, the positive or negative? Because we're, we're doing linear correlation. So you think more hours of sleep? Less reaction time. Quicker reaction time. So that would that look like on the... Let's see. You're getting more hours of sleep, sleep here. Fast reaction time. Less hours of sleep high. So it's going to be a negative? See it? Let's see. If we do hours here, reaction time here, so if we've got a lot of sleep, we would expect a real fast reaction time. Less sleep, slow, re high reaction time. So that's going to be a negative relationship. You see that? Just guessing. So we're thinking a negative relationship. So um, we are doing, we will be focusing just on linear, but all, all relationships are correlations linear? No. So we've got our independent variable, which statistics calls the explanatory variable. And then we've got our dependent variable on the y-axis, that's from Algebra 1, independent and dependent from Algebra, I should say. Um, and statistics calls the dependent variable the response variable. And if we have our scatter plot looking like this, it's slightly negative linear correlation. Oh, it actually, oh, whoops. So as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable decreases. That's a negative. Our positive will look like that. And not everything has to be linear. We are only going to be focusing on linear, but you might get something that looks like exponential. Or not exponential. What did I go for there? Quadratic. Quadratic. Parabola. Parabola. So, and it could be exponential. There's all kinds of non-linear 
But we are only going to be doing linear ones. This is just so you know they exist. And then we've got the no correlation like we had up with the height and IQ score, where everything's just all over the place. Good? Yeah. No correlation. We are going to be focusing on one example all the way through this section, so we're going to make a little scatter plot of it. And I'm going to ask you first: the scatter plot is going to be um, um, the amount of income you have and the percent of your income that you donate. What is common sense going to say to you about that? Uh, what your income level is and the I percent that you donate to charities? Donate to charities. What do you think is going to happen here? Okay, Taylor's guessing positive. She's saying the more money you make, the more money you're going to give to charity. Let's see what the scatter plot, let's see what the sample data tells us. So, what type of correlation? What type of correlation? That's our question. Uh, this is right there. So we're going to make a scatter plot. I'm going to give you the table because we're going to, like I said, we're going to be using it through the whole thing. Our income level, and this is in thousands of dollars. And then the donating percent. And they did a sample of one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the first person income level was forty-two thousand dollars. Donate nine percent. Forty-eight thousand dollars. Donate ten percent. Fifty thousand dollars. Donate eight. Fifty-nine thousand dollars. Donate five. Too much for you. Sixty-five thousand. Donate six. Seventy-two thousand. Donate three. This is percent. So three percent of their income, six percent of their income, five percent. Okay. So let's make a little scatter plot. So our income is our dependent or um, explanatory variable. These are thousands of dollars. And then we've got our donating percentage. Okay, but because our first income is starting at $42,000, we will put a little break in there. And we're going from, let's go by $10,000. Or so we have enough for five. 40, 45, 50, let's go by 5, 55, 60, 65, 70, <laughs> make it fit. And then here we only got to go up to 10, and we're starting lowest is 3, so we'll count by 1's there. Make a quick scatter plot. I'll make my scatter plot.
okay, so what kind of relationship do you see? Definitely negative, and that is true data. The more people make, the less percent they will donate. Yep. Yeah. Percent. Yeah, this is assuming that the people with a lower income are actually donating to charity. You're assuming people are nice. You could figure it out, you know, just 3% of 72,000, how much are they donating? I mean, I gave, I gave And 10% of 48,000. No that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it should be the other way around, yeah. The more money you make, the more willing you to mm -hmm. charity? Yeah, you would think. It doesn't work that way. The more money, the more they want to hold on to it. I feel like Sorry, so too though, like the people who make more money, they probably have in the harder spot too, so they know how hard it is to come out. So when they're in a good spot, they probably get to go ahead, Who knows what goes through there? Okay. So now we're going to talk about, I don't know if you did this in advanced algebra or not, correlation <coughs> coefficient, the R value that tells you how strong the relationship is. Did you guys do that in advanced algebra? I don't remember. Don't remember. Okay. So you can yeah. see if we try to draw a line through here or wherever, you know, you, you, your best fit line, and we used to eyeball it. Line of best fit. Line of best fit. Best fit line. What do you think the And then the closer the points are to be on that one line, the stronger the relationship. And there's a number that we give to that. It's called the correlation coefficient. I could have told you this was negative. I asked. You didn't offer an answer. Correlation coefficient, which we call R, lowercase r, is a value that indicates the strength and direction. of the correlation. Okay, if R is equal to 1, that's a perfect correlation, Oops. perfect correlation, every single point lands on the line, nothing's off the line. So R equals 1 is a perfect correlation. I should say positive or negative. Because a negative one would be a, a negative correlation, but every single point's on the line. A positive one, positive, but every single point's on the line. So that's a perfect correlation. So I'm going to show you some examples so you can see. Um, and they don't have the lines drawn in, but take a look. We're going to be calculating our values here in a minute. So if you kind of estimate your line through there, this one comes out because a lot of the points are kind of a little bit far away, but you can definitely see a positive correlation there. That R value came out 0.81. Okay, this one here, they do look a little closer and tighter to the line. And it's negative. It came out negative 0.92. This kind of scattered, but I do see a positive. If I kind of loop it around there, I do see a positive, but 0.45. So you can see the more spread out, the lower this number gets. And this one all over the place, where you say no correlation, the R value is almost down to 0, 0, 0.04. So if the R value goes from, I don't know that I would ever hit 0, but close to 0, greater than 0, to 1. All right. And we're going to be finding that R value, and it's a whole lovely yeah, okay. formula. Uh, oh. So I'm just get them away. Oh. That's a lot oh. of problems. But we have calculators with lists that will do this for us nicely. So here we go. Yeah. But we can but there's not a lot. Look, we're going to be doing this one here. Okay, so calculating a cor correlation coefficient. We want to know how strong the relationship is. So calculating the correlation coefficient R.
Okay, you need five values. You need to find the sum of your x values. You need the sum of your y values. You need the sum of the x times y. The sum of the x squared and the sum of the y squared. And our lists are going to do all of this for us. Okay, once you've got those five values, it's just a plug and tug formula to get R. And you saw it, there's a little peek at it there. To get the R value. So, you're going to take the N is the number of data points you have times the sum of the X times Y, so value 3, minus the sum of X times the sum of Y. Then you're going to divide by two square roots down here. Oh, God. It's ugly. Oh, this is turning into the not pool. Yeah, to the pool. It is kind of like the pool. The sum of the X squared minus the sum of x squared. These are not the same thing here. Notice this is the x value squared and then add it up. This is the sum of the x's. You take that result and square it. Can you replace the sum of lists then technically? Uh, Is that how that's going to work? No, we're just going to um, find right the little values. Oh, there's another square root. Okay. Yeah, I told you two square roots down here. And it's the same thing with the y's. The sum of y squared minus sum of y squared. So let's find out how strong that correlation was for the income and donating percent. So finding R for example one. So how many lists are we going to need? Oh, only three. We need x, y, and then the x times y, and then we will get all the sum things. So I will do this with you so you can follow along. So get your x values in a list and your y values in a list. We need the numbers first. You have them. You have them one. Uh, the income was x and the for donating was y. You guys pay attention over there. Get your list going. So x is in a list. And the order doesn't matter. This has to be paired up correctly. Even though these are an increasing order, that wouldn't have to happen. So I got X is going in list one, Y is going in list two. List one times list two. And then the third list, because we need the sum of X times Y, our third list is going to be list one times Wait, list two. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Do you have to put them as like zero nine? No. What? Why not? Um. Five the it's going to be the same thing. I mean, the it'll be fine. The R value will still come out fine. That doesn't matter. Where's my list four is list one squared? Uh, no. No? No, we want just uh, list one times list two. Enter. Okay. Are we ready? Yep. Let's write down our five things here. We want the sum of x, the sum of y, the sum of x times y, the sum of x squared, and the sum of y squared. All right, we're going to run, we're going to quit and get out of here, run one bar stat on list one. So stat, calc, one bar stats on list one. And take a look. 
Does it add up the x's for me? What is it? And the x squared. And the x squared. Okay. So we get two of our values off of one bar stat list one. So 336. And if you look down a couple lines, you've got the sum of x squared. So that's 19,458. <coughs> okay. So what are we going to do next? One bar stats for list two. There you go. Stat, calc, one bar stat, list two. So the sum of x is, well, it would be the sum of y's, but. And then the uh, sum of the squareds is 315. And then you do it for list 3. We just need the sum, 2159. So after that, it's just um, plug and chug. Okay, so to get the R value. What is n again? How many data points did we have? Six. Times the sum of x, y is 2159. Minus sum of x is 336. Times 41. Six times 19,458 minus, what are you going to put for the sum of x squared? What is the sum of x? And we're going to square it, so you're going to have 336 squared. I can do that right now. Nope, I'm just writing it in like that. And the next square root, 6 times uh, 315 minus, and then I want the sum of y, which is 41 squared. Okay, if you're doing this correctly, you should be getting a number between 0 and 1. Well, let me tell you. And we know it should be coming up negative, because we already saw the relationship when we made the scatter plot. What's the top? It doesn't matter, whether you it. Okay, you take that back, retracting that question. Calculator user. Yeah. Terrible, I say. <laughs> You're telling me that's not it? Nope. I'm only about 9,700. Yeah, I'll come and check that out off. later. I will check that out later with you. Okay, the last thing we want to do now, it's pretty quick. What did we get? Oh, boy. Yep. Okay, Chasey didn't get it either. Chasey didn't get it either? What'd you get? Oh, Rush. What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? Uh, I'm closer. <laughs> no, I was on the last one. I no, said <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> Why did you run <laughs> <laughs> I will help you. I'm going to move on and we'll get the last no, part no, done. No, no, no. no, I'm not going to. Do you have it all in there? <laughs> yes. That's the whole line. Let's see. Wait, what was the answer? How do I get back? Hold up. Okay, I can see it right now. Ouch. You gotta put another set of parentheses around the numerator. I'm gonna insert two. Yeah, because otherwise that's gonna all it's dividing is that second one. Because you've got to need it to do the whole numerator, which includes oh, I'm delete that because we really need that anyway. Why? 
Because that, that first one came up. Show, yeah. That first one was a coffee one. Okay, so. We're getting close. All right, so we got the numerator. Hit enter. Oh, jeez. See the bottom. Did you uh, parenthesis the whole bottom? Mm, doesn't look like it. No. Okay. Because you got two um, square roots down there. Yeah. It's, oh. So it's got to multiply those. You need something around the whole numerator and around the whole denominator. So it does that and it does all of that. Okay. Let's see what we get here. All right, guys, I did it. Okay. Um, here we go. Last thing. I like that it's royal. No. Okay, we're going to do one more hypothesis test. I think it's our last. It says the last one for the chapter, by the way. Is that a B or is that a That is a Greek letter rho. It doesn't seem to look like an R. Rho, because it's, it's the population value for our R that we're using, but they call it rho. It looks like a P. But I think they're using rho because it starts with R and a correlation sample coefficient is R, so I think that's the connection there. So, what we're saying is if rho does not equal zero, that means we've got a significant correlation. Yep. If the rho then equals zero, there's no significant correlation. Okay. And this is all we are checking. We're only checking if they're significant. I have no vision for that. Okay, we could oh, test yeah. for a strong positive correlation. That um, claim would be written rho is greater than zero. Or we could test for a strong negative correlation, and that would be rho less than zero. We're not doing those. So oh. these are not. Oh, I see. Those dashes for each thing. Yeah. I did not get that. I thought you were covering up half of it. No, we are not doing that. We're only checking to see if it's a significant correlation. So this will be your claim every time. Good test. Those are ditto. ditto. Good test for a strong negative correlate. Ditto means see above. But is that oh. supposed to be That shorthand notation you guys don't know? Yeah, you, just do know. you do know that. Okay. I Critical value is a T value. <laughs> Guys, stay with me. Degrees of freedom, N minus 2 because you've got two different variables you're working with. So T table in degrees of freedom n minus two. And once you calculate your R value to turn that into a T score, it's a simple plug and chug. Nope. R divided by square root of one minus R squared over n minus two. Because there's um, two different uh, income level and Donating percent, each one of those different items gets a degree of freedom taken away. Okay, so we're just going to test the significance of the correlation coefficient we just found, and we will be done.
<laughs> a regular hypothesis test. Okay. So last one. You went too fast. Significant. Nope. Of the correlation coefficient in example two. Oh no, I didn't do it. Test alpha equals O one. Okay, and our R value in Example 2 was negative 0.92. Okay, the claim is always the same. You can't mess these up. The claim is that there uh, is significant. Always. All the way through. Claim is significant. Making the claim the ha. The ho. So they're always going to be two-tailed tests. So using your t-table with, it would be four degrees of freedom because we had a sample size of six, six minus two. And O1. Oh, so O1 actually has to be 0 0.005. Divide that 1%. Always, yep. It says uh, see if there is a significant correlation test to see if there is a significant correlation. So what's this T on the, on the critical? Positive and negative 4.604. And we've got our R value. We already calculated it, so now we'll turn that into a T score. Since I'm squaring the 0.92, I'm not going to bother with the negative because we know a negative squared is just going to go positive anyway. So I'm just not going to bother with the negative. So I didn't even need the parentheses. When in doubt, you obviously didn't do that last time, did you? Uh, I, slapped, I slapped them almost everywhere. I missed spots. You missed two spots, around the numerator, around the denominator. But I put them everywhere else. I where you didn't need them. That's good. Yeah, yeah. You see, I have them. Ugh. I have them all. I guess they have. Oh, no. I, yeah, you're right. Really Reject. Negative point Reject. 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 Negative uh, 4.6 what? 9? Negative 4.69. So reject the hoe. <coughs> Claim is no, true. No, there no. is a significant correlation. Okay. Page 47, 1, 2. Wait, what? Uh, you can stop. Uh, you can... Please. There it is. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of nothing. Uh,